Okay, so hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you about how we perceive our body and more precisely, how we perceive the size and shape of our body and our body part and how that is important for the way we perceive the world around us. But well, you see the title here, it's written distorted body representation. So why am I talking about distortions? Well, to just to put you into context, what brought me to my topic is a famous story of Alice in Wonderland that you can see on the left, written by Lewis Carroll. So what happened in this story? Well, you have Alice following a rabbit, and then uh, suddenly she falls in the hole of the rabbit. And then there is a table, and on this table, there is a bottle where it's written, drinks me. And of course, what does she do? She drinks it. <laughs> and then what happened? Well, suddenly, she feels like her whole body is shrinking, shrinking, and that everything around her is becoming really, really huge. Well, then as if it was not enough, she finds some cakes where it's written, eat me, she eats them, and then just after that, she starts growing, growing, and feels like her body is gigantic, and that everything around her is getting very tiny. Well, actually, that might seem weird to you, but there are people around us that experience exactly those similar sensations. And those patients suffer from what we call Alice in Wonderland syndromes. So those are symptoms that are actually generally caused by migraines or epilepsy. And those patients can feel like they have, I don't know, some parts of their body that are getting really, really big or really small, exactly like Alice. But that has dress dramatic consequences sometimes on the way they perceive the world around them. So for instance, they can feel like they can see objects that seem much bigger or smaller than they actually are, or they can also feel like time is slowing down. Well, I just told you about patients so far, but my title is a bit broader. So the point here is trying to ask maybe, oh, yeah, it was not supposed to appear, but <laughs> so I was going to ask you, how do you think that we actually perceive our body in general? Do you think we have accurate or distorted body representation? Overall, I mean, I was supposed to ask a question, so actually that's how you do it at the age of three. You draw a famous tadpole where you have legs going out of the head and some kind of arms getting out of the ears. Well, you're going to tell me it's not really, really what you have in life in general. We, pr we learn those kind of body proportions through time. We are going to know where our hands are located in space. Well, then we learn, but to which extent? Because if you look at now, I would draw my body. Most of us would actually do still exactly the same. Like when you see that, I would put the eyes in general like that. Well, and I'm not cheating because, well, if I show you that was my drawing just before the presentation, well, not really, really good. But what does that tell us? Yeah, it tells us that body representations are not properly assessed by drawing. Because here, what it reflects is just my bad drawing skills. So then the question is, how can we assess body representation or the way we perceive our body? A simple task, for instance, would be to ask you, well, to, to show you on a screen a bunch of hands that vary in aspect ratio, and then you would have to tell me which one of those hands correspond to your hand. And you are extremely, really good at recognizing your own hand size. Now, is it always the case? If I change sensory modality, and now I ask you, all of you, to put your hand under the table and try to point towards the felt location of the tip and knuckles of your hand, and that after that, I draw the map between those points, it will appear that your hand is extremely distorted so that you have shortened fingers and a broader hand map, a uh, broader hand uh, like that. <laughs> and that's interesting because those distortions seem to mirror a very famous anisotropy that are located in the primary somatosensory cortex in your brain. So that's quite puzzling in some sense. Well, if we, are we also have distorted body representation, why are we able? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> why are we able to act properly in space? Well, the answer lies in the fact that our body representation are malleable, and each time we are interacting with the world around us, we are those, those stored body representations are shaped by the sensory signals around us. So, for instance. An example of how you would change those body representation in the lab would be to put vibration on your tendons here and touch your nose. And while you put those vibrations, you simulate the proprioceptive system and it gives you the sensation that your nose is growing. Well, 
So what I want to say to, find, to, to finalize all that is that basically our body representation can be changed in the lab and you experience it probably also when you go to the dentist. And what we are trying to do, why we are trying to understand why, how we can change those body representation is because it's a way for us to understand how those representation, how we perceive our body and trying maybe to, to find some therapy for patients that have in, ge in general in their daily life some distorted body representation. That's it.